We understand that we are in the conditions of intense war. In this episode, you will see footage of the documentary chronicling the battles of the 3rd Separate Assault Brigade with the enemy in the Bakhmut direction. The commanders and soldiers of this 2nd Assault Battalion share their impressions of the war and some of the results of the unit's work in one of the hottest spots of the front. Everyone in our unit wanted to go to Bakhmut because everyone knew that the main action is here, that the Wagnerites are here. Well, I was glad. Even now, I'm totally happy with my choice. Tell me that I need to go on a clearing operation right now. Just give me 10 minutes to pack up my stuff and let's go. My brother was killed in the Bakhmut direction. And I had this feeling of vengeance. And I'm very good at it. We got there and we saw a lot of trench digging had to be done. There were no backup positions. That is, we came there. Some knee-deep trenches have already been prepared and the boys had to dig those deeper. And you do this under heavy fire. Firstly, the enemy approaches our positions at a distance of 20 to 30 meters. Then, we push the enemy back, approach their positions through the trenches at the same distance, and it turns into a real man-to-man -man shootout, with the use of grenades and with no artillery involved. Because you cannot use artillery in such situations, there must be a certain distance between the enemy and our positions. And this is mainly the war of small arms and heavier weapons, such as grenade launchers, SPGs, ATGMs. In other words, everything that can be fired directly from the positions. And those weapons which you can hit the enemy targets while actively maneuvering. We're waiting for the order. The enemy is working there with Pokemon. They have to move out of the dugout. Do you copy? Plus, get to work. Shot. Good. In general, those are round-the-clock assaults. Just for you to understand, the assaults can last for 12 hours. The boys did not sleep at all. The contact was at a distance of 15 to 20 meters. Myron was the senior in position almost all the time. He said, I will not abandon the position. Bring me grenades, ammunition, and give me fresh people. We will hold into the last. The guys let the enemy at 20 to 25 meters simply destroyed them with grenades. During the night, Myron could spend two boxes of grenades. I kept hearing on the walkie-talkie, I need grenades, I need grenades. They had visual contact with the enemies, and grenades were being thrown both ways. And it got to the point where the enemy shouted, maybe a five-minute smoke break? Myron replied, I don't smoke, then pulled the pin out and threw a grenade. I personally emptied one and a half boxes of grenades then. Well, the orcs kept on swarming. One of them was shouting, I'm wounded, I'm wounded. We decided to wait for the moment when more of them would come to pull him out, to put them all down, but no one came for him. Next, grenades continued to do the job. We put a lot of the bastards down. We did good. They come in groups of 30 to 50 people. They roll up, engage in a firefight, roll back. If one group is destroyed, then another one is rolling. They absolutely do not count their people. In fact, the stories about the Russians coming at us, standing at their full height and storming our positions without taking cover, are true stories. They have no way back. If they turn back, they are shot by their own. That's the reality. I can't say I feel sorry for those people, but I feel sorry that such a thing is happening in the 21st century. They came in. I could see where they were coming from. We fired at them from the right flank. The shelter belt is not traversable at all. Everything's cracking there. But still, they break through and they're not afraid. We shoot them with a the machine gun. That doesn't give a damn about the frost. Then again, from the same spot, they stand up to full height and keep moving. Guys, we don't have much time. He's standing at his full height.
Those dudes are playing crazy. One or two of them crawl up at 15 meters to our positions. Artillery shelling starts immediately. They have their night vision devices on, spotting our positions and adjusting fire. We shot three of those spotters in a day. You take one down, another one crawls up, then one more. There was such a situation, their mortars started firing at us. Shells were landing all around. We took one of those fire adjusters down, but we couldn't hit the other one, because he ran deeper into the shelter belt. After three to four incoming hits, the fifth one landed precisely near that dude. We saw that the next one was coming. Damn zombies. I can't call them anything else. I don't know what motivates them. But we searched some of the dead bodies, and each of them had some kind of pills with them. In any case, a person has to be on something, because I don't know how this can be tolerated. It is psychologically hard. He is on his own, crawling point-blank to us. This is 100% suicide. You will either be hit as you are approaching, or on your way back. Either way, you will die. The longest enemy assault on our positions lasted for about three days, without stopping. An enemy group approaches, gets their asses kicked, rolls away, then 40-50 minute pause, and the next group advances. And all this repeats for three days. And it's tough. It's coming to us. Here, everyone undergoes hardening, especially the infantry. The lads learn to feel their limit and adjust the intensity, because when we first came here, the boys said that there was a big problem with cleaning the rifles. The boys are shooting a lot and their rifles jam. Then I figured out why, because the guys were putting blocking fire. It means that you are shooting in long bursts at the enemy coming at you, and you're firing all the time, and you don't have time to clean your weapon as you spend the entire ammo kit in a barrage fire, so your weapon starts to jam. That's why, when we have a spare minute, half the personnel cleans the weapons, while the other half waits. Then they switch, because the enemy may resume their offensive at any time. The consumption of ammunition in this case is already lower, since you have to shoot accurately. Come on. They're coming in from the right. Suppressive fire. Fire. It's jammed. We did a great job pinning them off, you and me. Fixed it. Fixed it. They're eight meters away from us. Damn, hell. We got a lot of them. Damn, Bakhmut, you're so happy to see me. A group of six people gathered at the end of the shelter belt, split into two threes, and began to approach us. The trees in the shelter belt are mowed down, so the visibility is perfect. They were right in front of us, like sitting ducks. We let them approach at 100 meters, then shot with a fragmentation charge, and only three people remained from their group. In this way, we could destroy up to five groups in one night. Then they roll away, regroup at the corner of the shelter belt, and come in fresh. We figured out this rotation of theirs, and we were just waiting for the moment when all six of them were in one spot and then we launched a couple of zucchinis there. Others in their place would have realized that it is unwise to flock to one place, but they swarm every time as if it's for the first time. Not only that, they may walk around there, smoke. Well, how can you not launch something their way? Feels like a sacred duty. Just stop by, huh? Yeah, lads, work's done. The enemies couldn't escape with half their stuff. Entire prisons are emptied in Russia as they are sending inmates to the war. 
and not a single rat would ever squeal that someone's rights and freedoms are being violated. They don't care, really. It is what it is. For comparison's sake, at a certain moment, the Wagnerites were replaced by Russian paratroopers. They operated in much more coordinated manner. Their professional level was instantly felt. But as soon as they get their asses whooped, they're gone. I'm seeing the movement. Copy that, Chaplain. Working. They're more in the shelter belt. Target's down. I knew they would risk an attack. We had two incoming hits. We had battles that lasted for 10, 15 hours. Shootouts that constantly keep the infantry on their toes. Against us were paratroopers from the 76th VDV Brigade. They arrived at night, carried out a high-quality maneuver and approached quietly, pretty inconspicuously. Therefore, it was a real problem. We fought from 1 o'clock at night until 12 o'clock in the morning. After that, we started to pull back for an evacuation. Since we had guys who were wounded, our machine guns began to jam. We could no longer hold on effectively. Those are not ex-convicts, but sufficiently professional ones who take away their KIAs and WIAs. They move very carefully, tactically, very prepared. They approach the positions with quick throws that make it difficult to hit them. This is their tactic. Their wounded are allowed to retreat. These are not Wagnerites. I was overwhelmed by emotions. I saw that a bunch of them were coming at us. We destroyed them. I had a smoke break, cleaned and reloaded my weapon, and the next batch of them started to advance. We destroyed that one too. Well, how can you be afraid of it? One of our other guys saw another orc. He stood across the road 40 meters from us. I raised my head, and that scum also raised his head. And we looked into each other's eyes like that. Then he took out a disposable grenade launcher and shot it at me, but the grenade went higher. And while that clown was disoriented by the smoke, I took my single-use launcher, fired it, and shouted, Got it, bastard? Then someone from the shelter belt shouted in response, You. Got it, bastard? Burn in hell. Go f*** yourself. I'm not afraid of enemy infantry, neither are my boys. May even a hundred of them come at us. Give me at least ten fine guys, a machine gun, an RPG, and we'll hold on. And damn, even if they're 360 degrees. They are shooting randomly, constantly shooting in the wrong direction. Well, damn, there's no reason to be afraid of them. They are using meat assaults, but their seniors in their headquarters are more competent than their field commanders. They always press into the joint, the space between our units. What does it mean? So here's our first company and here's our second company. And they put pressure not on the first or second company, but on the junction between the unit. As a result, the first company thinks that the second company should deal with them, while the second company thinks the first one should do it. And this is how the enemy squeezes in. Here you've got the Donobus soil. You've got enemy hordes. It's warm outside. They're getting fried. When they use the tactic of constantly piling up, keeping a tight pace, it's very exhausting mentally. And with the help of that, they are pushing some of the areas of the front, as we can see that now. And because of that, such a situation exists. There is such a thing as a military initiative. It is necessary to seize the initiative. You don't have to defend yourself against enemy attacks all the time, but you have to impose your own pace. Besides, the boys need to go through the battle hardening to overcome this psychological barrier. Therefore, I said, we have to clear it, lads. I will have artillery, a tank, mortars, do a prep work. When we finish, we will give you a signal and you will have to go in those trenches and sweep those fuckers that are still there. Collect trophies, put barbed wire, plant some MONs, because more of them will come at night. You have to prepare. 
Our tanks worked perfectly. We had tankers lying rounds as needed. There was one battle when the enemy infantry approached us once again. I had two soldiers from the fire support platoon with me and they were saying, everything is bad, now they're just squeezing us. We don't know what to do next. And then, when we heard that our tank arrived and started to work, the guys cheered up and started to work too. Tanks cooperate very well with us. A great thing about our brigade is that we've got many officers who do not have Soviet military education. They do not operate according to what the old field manuals tell. Those are creative people, because war is art. So what's that? That's the Browning. Get the Browning over here. We had a case when we were setting the enemy ammunition storage on fire for four days in a row. It was located in roughly the same location, in a shelter belt. The first round flew over the target, and the second landed perfectly where it was supposed to land. I told the tank gunner to put another one in the same place, and we watched the ammo depot detonate. The next day, the enemies were messing there and there again, so on the third day, it was the same story again, and we had already started joking it. Even if there were no appointed targets in that location for us to hit, we would still shoot a few rounds there, since the enemy would have something stored there anyway. We were blowing up their ammunition for four days, and they kept bringing more ammunition there again and again. I don't know what their tactics and strategy are, but there's definitely something about it. Also, before that, the 3rd Assault Battalion had their UAVs and drones set up really well. I was keeping track of the live feed, seeing all the hits in the area, and could instantly make adjustments. This speeds up our work by probably 10 times. It seems that the enemy ran off. He's running away. Running away. <laughs> Maybe we should hit him with a VOG. Let's do it. We broadcast the live feed from a drone to the entire battalion. The broadcast is on a common channel so that both the battalion and the company can see it. And the company commander can control the battle. Where to cover, where to pull back. If the boys call for an evac, where the vehicle should arrive. Which areas with a concentration of enemy personnel should the artillery suppress? There are many, many nuances. This is our Nanka 90. It is detonated remotely. And there is another 12 kilograms of TNT inside the box. And an ATB shopping bag. And an ATB shopping bag, right. Here's our car, and here's the enemy looking out. He doesn't know what to do or what it is. They're damn blown away there. We have a lot of heroic deeds of our soldiers. It is safe to say that soldiers are giving their everything and even more. For example, the sergeant of the 3rd platoon, the chief sergeant of the platoon, call sign Greek. During the enemy's offensive, the 63rd brigade lost its positions and observation post was covering our flank. The enemy began to advance to our rear, and Greek, together with the platoon of Medic Shram and another soldier from the 63rd Brigade, carried out such a counterattack in the direction of the enemy's observation post, engaging in the battle and pushing back the enemy, and Greek even decided to go on a counterattack, crawled up to the enemy position and engaged them with hand grenades. During the fire contact, the bullet pierced his artery and unfortunately, we could not save him, but that was a heroic act, to say the least. There was a moment when the machine gunner of the 1st platoon set up two machine guns and a rifle and was just running between several positions, creating the effect of a mass presence of our forces, and the enemy, already approaching, were shouting, Shut that machine gun down! We've had enough of it! And he was working until the last moment, until the machine gun started to jam, and when he left the position, he even took the machine gun with him. The guy, call sign Variag, 
They even threw a grenade at him. He covered his brother in arms with his body, and luckily the grenade did not go off. I can list a lot of such actions. The second platoon, which placed a 60 millimeter mortar in an open field to support us and distract the enemy. There were many moments like those, he sniper platoon hitting the targets. The machine gunners of the fire support company relying purely on their naked eyes at night. War can feel your fear. If a person cannot manage his fear, then most likely he will get hit. Taking into account the fact that they have much more human resources and still much more equipment, even though it's old and shitty Soviet area machinery, we can defeat them exclusively with our professionalism. If you were interested in today's episode and would like me to continue doing episodes like this next, then let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment. You can support the author by the details in the description. Thank you.